What's up, everybody? This is the Growing Up Italian podcast, and we are in the Bronx today, if you can't tell by who I'm with. We have a very special guest, Lilo Brancato, and Wally, a.k.a. Mr. Positive. How you yeah, guys doing today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Everything's good. What about yourself? We're good, good. Uh, Positive, I mean, yeah. we have Super Sad, Mozzarella, Bread in front of us. We're in the BX. Um, thank you, Wally, for letting us use your uh, facility My here yeah, to do this episode. Thank you. I appreciate it. Got great business here, dry cleaning. Yeah. He has, uh, he has like all these uh, people waiting for him outside to do a video. <laughs> this, guy, this guy on social media became a sensation overnight. I had over 40 people come to take pictures here. It's amazing. And I have a, on Friday nights, we do, a, we do happy hour. They come here uh, like when I'm closing. All right, we drink Coronas. And then I take them to Tommy's for some of beach. All right? And, uh, and then I take <laughs> this is, this is a laundry mat, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a laundry yeah. mat. This is, this, is the, this is like a chic hangout. <laughs> so, Lilo, uh, how's everything going with you, man? Um, I saw you on Premium Pete's podcast a while ago, and I loved the episode. So I really wanted to bring that same energy to us. Sure. And show all our followers what you're about because... I don't know if a lot of people know, but you're zip off the boat, like speak Italian every day. Yeah, well, my parents. Your parents. My, my adopted well, were, parents. Yeah, because you, I mean, people that don't know, you were adopted. I was adopted uh, from, I was born in Bogota, Colombia. Came here when I was four months old. Uh, raised my, an off the boat Italian fa- family. My dad was Sicilian. Rest in peace. My mother's Calabrese. Um, they didn't think they could have any more kids. They wanted to adopt. They found me. And you grew me. up Italian. Right, yeah. And then once they adopted me, they found out they were pregnant with my brother. So me and my brother Vincent were nine months apart. Oh, wow. So a lot of people don't know. Like, Irish you know, twins. Yeah, they were like, well, how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as soon true. as your mom got back. Yeah, what, what, you know, pound it out. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how was uh, your experiences on being... On a movie like Bronx Tale, like a legendary movie that I think is one of the greatest movies of all time, especially being Italian, you know, Bronx Tale, Goodfellas, that's always the two. Oh, and, the Godfather. And too. Godfather also, yeah. But those are the three, you know? So, like, what does it mean to you, like, to be, like, the main star on a movie like that? That's something that you appreciate more over time. hmm Because... You, you see how the film stands the test of time. And it, it's just as popular now, as even, probably even more with interracial marriages and becoming more prevalent in society. So I think it's a, a more important story now than it was back then. Back then, doing the film, I mean, just to have given an opportunity just to audition for the film was like, wow, you know. But then to get the part, and everything happened so fast. And I was, you know, you know this is the, that was during the years of my life when you're going to be shaped and molded. 15, mm-hmm. 16 years old. So it's like, my friends are going to high school and I'm doing this movie, but I didn't know how successful it was going to become. I mean, I was working with De Niro. I mean... Did you watch the show on Broadway? No, I never saw you it. You never saw it? No, I never it saw it. It was good. Yeah. I saw it like two times. I think it's definitely... The musical or the, the music, The musical, the yeah. The one-man show. The, the musical. Oh, okay. He, My friend Lepic, shout out to our videographer here, he was telling me about the one-man show and I always wanted to see that because I can't imagine one guy doing... All these parts. I yeah, guess. yeah. Well, you know, I won't... As far as the musical, Chaz Palminteri's a producer on it mm-hmm. and whatever, and I don't, I don't support him. Because when I got in trouble, um, he said a lot of bad stuff about me. Mm. And, you know, it's like, I could understand where he's coming from on one side, because it's like, you know, I gave this kid, you know, Bob and I, De Niro and him, gave me an opportunity of a lifetime, and I appreciate it, believe me. I really do. Because without them, I would never be here today mm-hmm. and have been in that, you know, great, iconic film mm-hmm. that, you know, still to this day is paying dividends, you know what I mean? Still, yeah, still, still helping me, yeah. you know, in many aspects. But, you know, the fact that he knew my mom and dad, you know, they used to come on the set, you know, and he's got kids, you know, so it's like, I mean, obviously, you know, I wasn't the one that pulled the trigger. I was a victim of circumstance, drug addiction. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm not playing the victim. But, you know, it is what it is. It was black and white what happened that night. I myself did not have a gun. And for him to go public on top of everything else I was dealing with, to say, 
the things he said, especially, you know, my mother and father. You know they're good people. Right. My mother and father used to come on the set, used to bring food for Chaz and yeah. Bobby De Niro, you know the way the Italians yeah. are. Great people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, then you want to say things like that. It's like, you're not only hurting me, but you're hurting my parents, yeah. who was nothing but nice to you. But it's not... You know, in a situation like now that, you're not you even just keep your fucking mouth shut, you know? Seriously. But now you're not even, like, really, like, promoting stuff like that. You're promoting all these positive things. Right, absolutely. Talking in schools. Right, right. So, because like, you're not even standing by, like, you know you made a mistake. Absolutely. And you're I sorry for it. I take full responsibility for the way my actions and my drug addiction made a contribution in, 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 in the death of a heroic police officer. There's no question about that. There's no question about that. And to this day, there's not one day that goes by that I don't think about what happened that night and how I'm sorry. You wish you could just take and it I, back. how I wish I could just take it back or change it, but we can't do that in life. So you can learn from mm -hmm. it and look at, you know, the fact that I was given a second chance, such a blessing, because not everyone gets a second chance. Okay, so a lot of people don't get a first chance. And to give them two, to get a second chance, two chances, it's an absolute blessing. And God didn't put me where I am today to come back and do what I was doing. Drugs and start trouble and all this other shit. Mm -hmm. He brought me back to use my experience to help other people that were in a Might be facing situation. the same thing. Right, because you have the experience. Mm -hmm. They're going to listen to you, Lilo. You were in the Bronx Tale. They love you. They love that film. And now you're talking to them on a different level. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get them straight. And you believe it or not, it's such a gift because you, you would be so surprised how many people listen, how many kids, like, they just want to do it because of me. Because I was, yo, Lilo, you know, man, I got 32 days sober today, you know? And it's such a beautiful thing to hear some kid's mother call you and say, Lilo, thank you so much, man. You saved my kid's life. But it doesn't always happen like that. Because a lot of times the mother will call and say, you remember my son, Kevin? Yeah, he died Tuesday. That's that's part of it. You know, that's, that's the that's, reality. Yeah. But I'll do whatever I can because I know that was my purpose in this life. And that's to help. To help people. Others, you know, sick and suffering from addiction. No, it's really amazing that you're doing that because a lot of people, you know, they turn their face on their community and stuff like that. But Wally, but Wally's a Bronx native, mind you. What was the reaction of Bronx Tale when that movie came out? Like, in the streets, like, what was just, like, the, like, you just walk down the street. I'm sure when it came out, it must have been, like... Well, first of all, they shot in the story. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, but we're on 31st. All right. <laughs> yeah. but I'm saying but, when the movie yeah, was no, in the, the theaters. Came out. No, it's funny, but he, I, there was a kid from our neighborhood. His name is Phil Gabarino. Yeah, my oh, boy. Okay, I so love him. Kept, well, Phil, was, Phil was showing us that he was the, your part. Are you showing us the audition tapes? He was. All right, he was. Were the you the last two? Because I on on Pete's episode. No, what happened? What Phil you, was you. When Phil ha had it, and then when De Niro saw Lilo, that just knocked Phil right out of the box. He, that that was it. What you happened? You know who Phil is right. Mm. Phil's the kid who shot Sonny at the end of the movie. Oh, right? okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. so what happened was he would come to my house and he would show us the things. He was, I'm going to be this thing. The Bronx Tale. <laughs> he was that kid's life, man. And he was a good-looking kid. He was a good-looking kid. He was All a right? fucking, he was a stunt. Right. So I said, oh, man. And then, and then when I said, what happened? He said, no. And then when I saw you in the movie, I said, yeah, that looks like Bob De Niro. He, he does. He just knocked him he right does. out of the box. So anyway, with that, so, man, we... Uh, Fortunately, unfortunately, I was married to a I was married to a, a girl, and her stepfather was uh, you know let, was in that life, you know. Look at this. So uh, that's me and Phil Garbarino. He came to see me in the can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's me him. and Phil. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Him. That's, him. That's, him. that's him. So he became a lifetime friend too. My boy, I didn't yeah. even know he was coming. They told me at the at the desk, Broncado, right. get ready for a visit. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I, my parents ain't coming today. I'm, I, I didn't I don't I didn't know I was getting a visit. And I said, could you do me a favor, call and see who it is. And I said, yeah, it's uh, Phil Garbarino. I said, yo, what the fuck is he doing, man? It's my ex man. Listen, that's when you see who really cares about you. When you're in a hospital or when you're in prison. Right. Who puts money on your books. And, right. and he did. That kid, he didn't even have a lot of money. And he still put 50 bucks on my books. And he, when I got to the, to the, to the visit, because the visit is there first, then I come. At, you know, you got vending machines with food and everything. Phil made sure he had the whole table full of food. Nice. Because I know you can't eat like this, so here, right, enjoy right. yourself. Yeah. Those little things mean the, the, the most. Sure, sure, sure. It shows someone's, like, true yeah. 
True Colors. He's a Bronx guy. He's a Bronx guy. He lived guy. on yeah. Philip. Oh, yeah. No, on Vincent. Vincent, right? And my store was on Philip and Vincent. Vincent, right. right. It, and his mother comes, my customer comes in. Marilyn, right? Yes, yeah, Marilyn. She was yeah, sweetheart yeah. too, with brother yeah. Tommy's brother. No, shout outs to Philip. He's getting a lot of, a lot. Of, apparently, you guys are very high on him, so yeah, yeah. I take your word for it. You know what I always thought, too? And. Because he, we were talking, he was talking about like, yo, we should do a movie like after. Like, I didn't die that night. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, you had all the Sonny's guys in the bars. Right. Everybody was fucked. You just shot the boss. You're right. not leaving that right, place. Right, right, You're right. going to get shot by every fucking person in that room. Right. <laughs> but I always thought of this. And then after I saw the Joker, right? Because, you know, like you could do a, a prequel of the Bronx Tale. It would be like Pesci. Sonny right. coming up. You know, right, why right. they killed that guy in the street? Yeah, right. yeah, why that fight yeah, was yeah. over? You could do that. I feel like they always were going to do that. They never but you done. know what, though? You know what I think would be even better? It wouldn't be a prequel or a sequel. It would be happening the same time as the Bronx Tale. Mm -hmm. But it's Phil. Because his father gets killed, right? By Sonny. Right. right. right? Remember the first blood pop? The first time he shot, he shot in the back. Yeah. Up the back. Right. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now you do a fucking movie about his life. How he had to grow up so tough right. and this and that. And he drove him fucking nuts to the point where that day he comes in and kills a boss. Right. That's right. like the Joker type shit. You know what it means, the balls you have to have? Just first of all, just to come, you know, like to do that, but to go in a bar, you would all. You know that you're going to get you, whacked. You know you're going to die. It's, it's a suicide mission. Right. You know you're going to die to do that. But I want to show a movie about what led up to that. That doesn't just happen overnight. Right. Those are years of, of something building up inside of you. That's a sm that's a smart idea. You know what that's I mean? like the many saints of Newark they're yeah, doing yeah. something similar. I'm I guarantee you, how many people will be interested in watching? That? I would watch that. I love all the I, I love good. I can't if you you flipping the channels and Goodfellas on, you stop and you watch it. No you matter how many good times you watch sales, it, you stop and watch it. And of course, Godfather's the king. So you you can't you can't yeah you watch Godfather. You know? Yeah. And when it's gonna snow and it's bad out, I got the Godfather the right way, starting off with in Sicily. Sicily. That, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, do yeah. It, I do it the right. What do they call that? Is that the saga or the? I don't know what it's called. Well, otherwise, I have it. I have. I have it from when chronological it, order. It, chronological yeah. order. So wait, you watch it too? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. The way, yeah. It's, Chron it's, it starts off. It starts off in Sicily. When, it puts when everything on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It puts everything in order for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it's not called one or two. I think it's called the, the Godfather, the Saga, the or some shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you start with that oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and that's it. Where's a snow day? And you're gonna be in like six hours. That's <laughs> it. That day. Boom. And they even got some some scenes that we never saw. Right. Yeah. Some some like stuff that the directors cut. There's some. I don't know. You, you never that see. One. You never see. Uh, cause it was um. Uh, you never see the the Godfather's partner, okay? Then they go to see him dying in the hospital. Oh yeah, I didn't like that scene. They, With they, Janko? Janko, yes, yeah, yeah. Janko. Godfather, yeah. use all your power. Yeah, yeah. That Janko. was not a great scene. But that scene was in the God. But that scene yeah, yeah, in the yeah. saga. That scene in the saga. You know, was a great scene. That was additional and additional scene. Cause you remember Clemenza when he was young, right? Remember? Oh, when he calls him through the window and he says, "I need okay. you to hide these guns from right. me," and they're wrapped up in the thing, and De Niro hides them for him. So, you know, it's showing this guy's a gun guy. Clemens is a gun guy. Right. You know what I mean? There's a scene where they're in, in like, right on Mulberry Street. It's a cold night, right? And they're at the gunsmith. It's this outside parking lot, and the guy's selling guns. De Niro's in the corner with a hat like this, and he's, like, quiet the way Vito is, and he's just observing everything. And the only light on his face is from that drum, and only half of his face is lit, and he's just sitting back there. He's watching everything. Clemenza's out there, and the guy who sells the guns, his little son is there, too. And he plays, like, the flute. So Clemenza's buying different guns and testing them out. And, he, and the, the, the guy who sells the guns, he's Italian. He tells his son, he says, go, go do a song for us. So he's doing the flute, and as he's doing the flute, Clemenza, boom, boom. You see him shooting with the music. Right. And then it goes back to De Niro in the corner, just sitting there. Yo, know, that shit was beautiful. Right. It was beautiful. I don't know why that didn't make it. But it's in the saga. Yeah, it's in the, it's saga. In the saga. Yeah, well, it's somewhere. Yeah, because I, I, saw, I never <laughs> watched that one. Yeah, that's the way. It's got a couple little scenes in there. That's the way to watch. The story don't change. But what about Casino? Casino is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like Casino? 
Casino was good. It was just a little too long. I thought it was a little too much with the Sharon Stone with the drugs. Like, they could have cut out, like, 45 minutes of that movie. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They could have did it in a voiceover. Well, how much time could they cut out of Irishman? <laughs> if they could cut 45 minutes out of Casino. Did yeah. you like Irishman? Um, I thought it was a good movie. It's a little long, though. I thought it was a good movie. Um, I had to watch it in two sessions. Yeah, I watched it in the theater. I had all these... Because, like, you know, these kids today, they don't know who Jimmy Hoffa is. You go to right. a yeah. kid in the street right now and say, you know no, who Jimmy Hoffa no, no, no. Yeah, but That's they right. could Google it and find right, out. Yeah, because but, they were doing a lot of promotion yeah, in Little Italy for it. Yeah. Like, Ferraras, all these places were giving out cannolis, yeah. and they had actors acting. Where's Jimmy Hoffa? Where's Jimmy yeah, Hoffa? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like... To familiarize you, people exactly, with Exactly, you know? And then yeah. people could Google and find everything at their fingertips. When I went day. to the movie theater to see it, there was not one person in that theater under 50 years old. It was all older people. Yeah? You know? Yeah, because that's who knows the story. You know? Did they give an intermission? I was just no. Kidding. I had to get up and use like the this. bathroom. They're all over 50. They can give an intermission. You know, they exactly. out. They, don't, they, don't they brought their bag with them. Yeah, they're right in the seats. That's their intermission. No, I'm all right. I don't got to use a the bathroom. They wore a diaper to yeah. the movie theaters. Yeah. So what's next for you, Lilo? Uh... I just did a film before Christmas called uh, I'm on Fire with the girl from The Sopranos. Which Jamie Lynn Sigler. She oh, played Tony's nice. daughter. Nice. She plays my wife. Oh, um, nice. It's a period piece. That's a nice piece right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I got the mustache. It takes place in the 80s. I'm a concrete guy like my father. Right. And I'm abusive to my son because he really didn't turn out the way I wanted. And you know, you see me beat him and shit like that. And uh, the title, I'm on Fire... It's because of that Bruce Springsteen song. Mm. Oh, I'm on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you see that this? song is the song in the film. Bruce Springsteen gave us the song because he was abused by his dad. So it's got a deep meaning. Right. It was really well written, shot. I mean, the, these people, these, the director, the writer, they paid attention to detail like you wouldn't believe. Like the dinner table at every single day. It felt like I was home. You know what I mean? Right. And just seeing all the 80s stuff and the way mm -hmm. they did it, it was perfect. I got that. I did a film called The Fury that I'm a uh, producer on, playing a member of law enforcement. Uh, oh, I did. I see. I yeah, see I that. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Yeah. Got that. I got one that just we just it was at a film festival the other night. They showed it's called The Fifth Burrow with the girl from uh, you know Tara Reid from American Pie. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, takes, yeah. it takes place in the uh, blonde, right? Yeah. yeah. It takes it takes place in uh, <laughs> Staten. It takes place in Staten Island. Because yeah, it's, it's uh, a fifth yeah, well, it, it touches on the whole drug epidemic with the heroin, and uh, it's uh, I saw it. It was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty good. And then I got a film called Made in Mexico. I got the white beard, I got the shaved head. I play a, a Mexican, a oh, really? a cartel guy. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I could, Something yeah. a little different. Yeah, yeah. Got uh, it's could be a good year for me. That so, guy. Sounds like a good bounce back year to yeah, me. Yeah. Little right? by little, man. Little by little. You know. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, you grew up in the Bronx or, or nah, Yonkers? I never even lived in the Bronx. I grew up in Yonkers. What's the biggest difference between the Bronx and the Yonkers? Well, like, people, you think Yonkers, people want Yonkers is six boroughs. People that will live yeah, here. That, that, that made the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. Long Island almost, yeah. right? Yeah. All the suburbs, are, all the suburbs in Westchester, everybody's from the Bronx. They, 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 they originate. Yeah, that's like moving up. Yeah. Is where you buy your own house, your own yeah. lawn, and. But there's still very nice places. In Bronx, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, still yeah, like yeah. It's nice things. over here. All along the water is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and they, got, they have two, three million dollar homes on the water, you know? Yeah. You, you ever hear of Riverdale? And Riverdale. That's, the right, by, that's right by Manhattan, right? Riverdale's oh, the no. West Bronx. And yeah, that, it is that, the West Bronx. And that looks at, yeah. you look across the Hudson, Hudson. you see Jersey, and, and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get to the tip. You were coming from Riverdale into Upper Manhattan. That's yeah. correct. Right. And that's, that's a Take rich, the Henry Hudson. Henry Hudson. That's a rich Jewish neighborhood. Yeah. Very rich. It's rich. They have. Four and five million dollar states on Fieldstone Road. It's unbelievable. You want you, you, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't even know if you, you know. if you took a nap and woke up, you wouldn't know you were yeah, in the Bronx. Yeah. And uh, really JF, JFK lived there from when he was a kid there for two years. Well, everything be. skyrocketed here, like the value of the properties yes, too. Yes, nice. But we went to uh, me and me and my camera guy here. We went to Arthur Avenue, and we went to get a sandwich. It was like a zoo, just a park and everything. Yeah, it's, crazy. it's crazy. This is like Arthur has to be the biggest attraction besides well, Yankee Stadium. Yeah. In, the, in Bronx the Bronx now, yeah. like the Bronx, people yeah. just come for. Well, first of all, if you notice, you'll see that really is the real little Italy. Yeah, okay? that's what a lot of people say. The people come back 
they come back to the neighborhood. All right, and you see there's like Jersey plates, Connecticut plates. They shop for they all their shop food, for right? food and stuff there. And it's great because they grew up there and they're looking at the third story tenement and they used to hang out with a fire escape and, they, and you can see like how beautiful, oh yeah, remember. And you can see the kids like, this kid's shit. Hurry up, let's get back to the car. Both sides. This thing over the summer. It's hysterical. Same thing with Fordham University is right there. So Fordham University is, is a top is a is a top tier university. That's correct. Car smart kids from all over the country come there. Yeah, so it's, a, it's not a nice. They got good sport programs got too. Sports yeah, but once you go on that campus, it's like yeah. a world unto oh, itself, oh, it's, right? It's a world by itself. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. All right, but and the kids and. The, the kids now, they don't, they don't care. They're, they know they travel in threes and fours. They don't have any problems. But when they come out, they go Fordham Road. It's like a jungle. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you see the people from Iowa, Lily White, are walking down there. They're walking, they're, the parents, I mean, the kids are like shopping. They're all happy. And the parents are, Ooh, the parents are freaking <laughs> even, out. Even in uh, Italy, in the hometown where I'm from, when uh, they, like we have, you know, they, everybody has their nicknames, like their family nicknames. You're right. Yeah. So there's like this one guy who's like a tough guy, and he's always like fucking people up. They call him Bronx. Yeah. That's yeah. his nickname. But that's like the rep that the Bronx has all over the world. Yeah, my my mother's side of the family, they were Igat, the cats. Oh, Igat, yeah. My, my grandfather was Toto Nugat. Yeah. My father was like Ning Ning or some shit like that. We got Bronya. You're right, though. They got the nicknames. Yeah. But do you, do you go often to Italy? I haven't been to Italy since the mid-'80s. I have no desire. No? You don't yeah, want to go? It's going backward instead of forward. You got to go live backward. You got to go live less better than you live here in Italy. The, the, it's, like, more primitive. Why would I, if, I, if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm going to go somewhere where I'm, you know what I mean? Like a, like a country like Germany. Germany's, like, you know what I mean? It's beautiful like this. It's for like vacation, for, though, like, you know, beach, that. Yeah, would, you rather go to Bahamas or something? Yeah, I would. It's better in the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> better beach, I guess. Yeah, you go to Sicily. What do they have? You, you got these people, if they got two cows, they're rich. I know. They got, they got nothing. They got nothing there's tough, right? tough parts of Italy. There's tough parts of Italy, you know? Yeah, real tough parts. <laughs> really poor. Yeah. And it's parts that are, like, like very crime ridden Like, you know, Naples? Yeah, Naples is bad. Well, there's that there's a place in Naples called Sicondoliano. Yeah. So... That's where they do a Gamora. That yeah, show. you watch that show? That, yeah, and I remember the movie too. Yeah, I remember the movie's I bought, phenomenal. I bought the movie for my dad. With the little kids on yeah, the cover yeah, with yeah, the yeah, gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that well, movie's that was hard. phenomenal. You see the projects over there yeah. like that? You go over there, I hear it. All you see on the floor is syringes everywhere. Everywhere. They, yeah, got whole, they got that whole city. And of course, it's my mother was because I'm not like, ah, they, 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 they feel they're like, uh, the we're most superior? Yeah, 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 superior. The, Ro the Romans and then the Napoli Dons. That's the way they, that's the way they I mean, at. old Italy, like, just, <laughs> like, not hates Napoli, but says, like, you know, like, when you say Napoli Don, it's like someone who robs. <laughs> and that's the reputation. Well, they're, 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 they're famous for thievery. You know what they're famous for? Pickpocketing. The Napoli Dons are f famous for pickpocketing. I hear you go over there, you got old ladies going in your back pocket. Yeah, everybody. You know, no. Every, you ever saw that video on Facebook? It's like the guy's going to buy a purse and his friend's behind him. And then like they have a plastic bag and he goes to hand it. And his friend hands him another like similar looking plastic bag. And he just like, the way he did it, it was sick. Yeah, like, yeah. But I'll never forget one time I went to Naples and uh, I was dropping someone off at the airport. Because it's two hours from my hometown to Naples. So we're like, we pull up in front of the airport. I bring the person in, you know, make sure they're good. Then when I come back out, my friend was waiting on the side in the car. And some kids come up to us and they're like, oh, tiene chingon deud. Like, you got $50? And my friend goes, no hay manga tiene mi look at young. Like, we don't even have tears, like, to eyes to cry. Yeah. So, like, how can we help you? I'm like, but ti maranu panina se wo. You know, like, yeah. we have an extra sandwich with us. You want it? Yeah. But it just go, goes to show, like, Naples is gangster. You can't even fly direct to Naples from New York. Really? You got to wait, like, once a, once a week you get a chance to. It's crazy, man. Really? I, yeah. Well, good. I ain't going to Naples anytime soon. <laughs> I don't really give a fuck. My family's from, my family's from, Bar, my family's from Bari. Oh, Adria, Adria oh they're, they're crazy, too. No, you know what's about the Bari's? When you hear about the Bari's? They speak a dialect of Italian that you don't nobody even understand. understands. <laughs> nobody <laughs> understands Barez except Barez. Barez, right. Yeah, my, uncle, my friend Vinny Giordano, his grandfather was Barez. We used to like, he used to live in the side apartment, so he used to come out and we used to hang out in front of the house. 
and he used to talk to us, and we had no, and we, I speak, man. My friend Vinny would just had come from, uh, not Vinny, that Vinny, his grandson, my other friend Vinny. He's just moved from Italy like three years prior, so Vinny he couldn't even barely understand, understand him. His name is Dominic, the old man. Oh, that's funny, man. But, yo, Lil, thank you so much for coming on. Wally, thank you for having us. Hey, my pleasure. This is a great man. episode, man. I appreciate you, like, for taking time out of your Sunday to do this. It's been an honor to sit with a legend, you know? My pleasure, brother. Believe me. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. No problem. I thank you to you for hey, yeah, no problem. Problem. No problem, man. Well, anything right. you want to say before we go? No, no. I, just, I wanted to listen to Lilo. This is your, your, this is your broadcast. This is a legend this right here. Yeah, 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 before we go, listen. though, I would also like to say that uh, I am also, you know, uh, I'm doing outreach work for, uh, you know, basically the company I, I am affiliated with and work for. It's called More Life Recovery. Uh, it's basically what we are is a treatment provider for those suffering with mental health and substance abuse disorders. And, uh, you know, I, please, I, I you know, if, if you or someone you know is out there or yourself, you know, and you're, you're struggling, please get the help that you need. Because when it comes to any addiction, any addiction, but especially drug and alcohol addiction, just think about it this way. Drug addiction is not a pair of shoes that some little kid has that he's going to outgrow. That's something that you never outgrow. If you don't address it and work at it and get the help that you need, you're going to die. So please, really, I urge you to get, you know, to make the necessary phone calls and seek that help. Okay? That alone was worth this whole episode. Hopefully someone hears that and, you know, yeah, they do what they got to do. Yeah, you to change one person's life. It's it's absolutely. like to change more, but if it does only one, we, 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 we We're ahead of the game. Right, and we accomplish what we want to accomplish. Enjoy your night, guys, all right?